Hi everyone, in today's video I'll be going through how to submit a dedicated survey on the Sea Watcher app. So if you go ahead and click start a survey, the app will ask you what type of survey you are doing, land or at sea. If you're doing a sea survey, you will need to provide the name of the vessel, details of the observer and your elevation, which is your height above sea level. If you are an iPhone user, the Compass app will let you know your elevation. And for Android users, there are applications you can download onto your phone. Next, you'll be prompted to give your effort conditions and your start location, which the app can find for you. For land-based surveys, you have the option of walking surveys or fixed point surveys. For fixed point surveys, you will need to state the observer, location, elevation and the site name. For the purpose of this example, we'll be doing a walking survey. And the first thing it will ask us to do is submit the effort conditions. So in addition to citing data, we also collect effort data. This is data about the environment and conditions at sea. We do this because these factors will impact our ability to spot animals. Therefore, it's really important to update the effort if conditions change and collect an effort reading every 15 minutes. The app will notify you when to do so. Firstly, you will need to enter information about the sea state, which basically means how disturbed is the sea. We rank this from a 0 to a 6. If the sea state is a 7 or above, you will need to stop your survey and come off effort as it's too difficult to sight animals. Moving on to glare. Glare is where the sun reflects off the sea, which can actually affect our ability to spot animals. And we rank this from a zero, no glare, to a three, strong glare. Next up is swell height. This is the height difference between the wave crest and the preceding wave trough. Your options are no swell, swell under one meter, moderate swell, one to two meters, and heavy, above two meters. Moving on to visibility, how far can you see? We measure this in kilometers and you have these four options to choose from. Last but not least, boat activity, where you log what type of boat and how many boats are in your surveying area. Select the observer and your location and press next to start your survey. When you sight a marine animal, click the add sighting button or the plus sign in a blue circle. You will then need to fill out details on your sighting. The first one being what species. Upon clicking on species, you will be taken to a list of animals in alphabetical order. To help you with identifying the species, you can view the species ID key, which takes you through the identification process. The app also features a species group section if you are unable to identify a sighting down to species level. For example, if the sighting you saw was definitely a dolphin, but you were unable to identify the species, you can simply select dolphin species. There is also a fact sheet for each species, which includes a gallery, video guide, and lots of useful information. Next, you'll be asked to select your confidence. How confident are you in your species identification? Possible, probable, or definite. Next is group size. First, enter your best estimate. As this is an estimation, you will then need to provide the minimum number of animals in a group and maximum. So, if I estimated there were five common dolphins, but there was definitely no less than four and no more than six. Any juveniles, click the box if so, and again, you will need to fill out your best estimation, minimum and maximum. Then, you will need to provide your distance from the animal in metres. In the case of group sightings, it's the distance to the centre of the group. From land sightings, it's the distance between animal and nearest piece of coastline. And from a vessel, it's the distance from an animal to the vessel. Then you will be asked to select the behaviour of the animal. You can select as many as possible. If the behaviour you're observing isn't on the list, you can add it to the comment section at the end. You'll need to provide what direction the animal was heading. There is also an option to select no direction and bearable direction. For bearing to animal, add the compass bearing to the sighting from you in degrees. 
Moving on to the where and when was the sighting section. So this is automatically logged by the app, however you are able to change it if you need to. And lastly, any additional information. The first thing that asks is any seabirds, if so, how many and what species. Next, do you have any photographs? Simply select yes or no. You can also add any additional comments. The more information, the better. Then, you're all ready to press submit and your sightings will be logged. Remember, every 15 minutes you will need to update the effort data, which the app will ask you to do, just like so. So, that's how to use the SeaWatcher app for the surveying. Thanks for watching.